Hey guys, today we're going to show you how we installed our 12 volt heated floors into our Ford Transit. I did a ton of research and finally found a 12 volt heated floor from Germany that comes with an adjustable thermostat. Check it out. The moment of truth. We're Tim and Katie and today we're showing you how we installed our sheet vinyl flooring and of course our 12 volt MeHeat heated floor system. It's really heating up. To show you just how well it works, oh. we ran it through a test to see how it stands up to our Canadian temperatures. 21.3 degrees. Be the... your toes, toasty warm. <laughs> Alright, so we bought Mannington Mill Creek sheet vinyl. Um, it's 12 feet wide by, f and we got it cut to 14 feet. So that way we can use it for two vans. So the center, it's really handy because I just noticed that they actually mark where the center of the sheet is. So that's where we'll cut along, strip it into two, save one for later, and then we'll be using our one half for this van. The reason that we cut it in half um, width-wise instead of lengthwise is because we want the planks to be running lengthwise along the van, or else the boards will look short and they'll actually make your van look smaller. We use the sheet vinyl flooring so that we can have one continuous waterproof surface and um, we read a, read a lot of reviews about the vinyl planks expanding, contracting with temperature changes and you don't have to worry about that with the sheet vinyl. Our van actually came with a factory cargo mat in there which is really helpful because it shows you where the wheel wells are and also where the cutout for the door is and all the little indentations along the side. So. We're going to put that into the van, but because we left an overhang for the cabinet, where the kitchen cabinet is going to be, we need to measure and make sure that we don't follow the cargo mat in that area or else we will be having exposed subfloor, which we obviously don't want. So we're going to take that in the van and make a bunch of notes on it, then we'll bring it back in here and transfer the template onto the vinyl sheet. So the cargo mat goes about half an inch away from the perimeter of the van. Um, so we don't want to trace exactly in the cargo van or else it'll be too short. So we're going to add half an inch around the whole perimeter, including like the wheel well areas and the other jets um, to make it a tight fit. Over here, we're going to measure and confirm these measurements that we had from the previous van. But if we trace here, obviously it wouldn't cover the subfloor. So that's where it's very important to get an accurate measurement of what you need to add. Lesson for everyone. If you're doing bottom up, then your cargo mat has to go bottom up. If you're doing top up, cargo mat has to go top up. So once the cargo mat is on the vinyl plank, you really have to make sure that it's exactly straight so that your planks don't end up running at a bit of an angle. So what I'm doing right now is just making sure it's all lined up and that we have half an inch along the one side so I don't have to cut an extra half an inch off. So there's one inch overhang over there. And then I'll just mark the one inch overhang on this side. Okay, cargo mat is gone. Now we're left with the outline of what our floor should be like. So what I use is a box cutter and a piece of wood just as like my cutting board so I don't cut our floor. Um, so I'll slide this under and then I will cut along the marked edges. The moment of truth. definitely some spots that need to be cut down further um, especially the area by the wheel well so if you're doing this I'd actually recommend you follow the cargo template exactly by the wheel well don't leave that extra half an inch and um, probably be better off <laughs> it is minus 20 here this morning and we are trying to get the van out um, to get it up to my sister's. She has a heated garage and has offered for us to work on the van in there. It is so cold. This is the shop. Big upgrade from the house, I'll tell you that. Today we're installing 12 volt heated flooring in our van. I found these um, heating pads infrared heating pads in Germany, um, a company called MeHeat, and I'll link the product in the description below. Um, they're a little bit tricky to figure out because the website's mostly in German, and I found if you um, email them directly, um, they do speak English and they're willing to help you out. So they took about a month to get shipped to Canada, and we're excited to put them um, 
in three different spots in our van. So we're gonna cut this one in half to shorten it and put it at the back here under the water tank, something like that. This one will go under the batteries and these two will be on their own thermostat. So the nice thing with these heating pads is they have a dedicated thermostat that you can control the temperature when they'll switch on, when they'll switch off. And all the other ones on the market that I could find that were 12 volt didn't have a thermostat so you had no control over which temperature they were turning on and off. So that's why I wanted to go with these ones. And they're um, very energy efficient. So they claim, I think, 98% efficiency on their website um, due to the infrared. And the pad itself doesn't get hot, so you can use it under all flooring types. And as you can see, it's very, very thin. So it shouldn't, shouldn't cause any wrinkles or anything under your flooring. And one in the middle is going to be the main one for our walkway. And yeah, as I said, they're, they're very efficient. So this large heating pad will draw around 10 amps at 12 volt. Um, this one will draw around 6 amps at 12 volt. And these ones are slightly more powerful. I want it to be just to be safe in really cold temperatures for the water tank and the batteries. So the main thing we're running into right now is just how to hide the wires. So we're going to use a router, um, just trace out where the wires are going and then use the router. And then we'll use this tape to tape down the pads and tape down the wires. And then we can glue and tape down our floor after that. And we're using sheet vinyl. I did double check with the company and they said it's no problem to use sheet vinyl with these. The main reason being A, that they're so thin, but also that they don't actually get hot. Um, with the infrared, they'll heat the floor up to about um, 25, 26 degrees, they said. Should be nice in the winter. So before we um, put the mats down and tape them down, we want to make sure that we fill any big holes with wood filler. There are big notches on the ends here where the wires come off, so we want to flip the pad over and we'll route her out just very slightly, maybe an eighth of an inch into the floor so that it sits nice and flat. So good. It's great. So now we got to mark where the wire comes out. We traced out our line for the wire right here, coming out of that little notch, and I found that the a one eighth inch straight bit fits the 14 gauge wire perfectly. So we're just going to use this as a guide. And we're planning for our water tank here and then a 12 volt undermount air conditioning unit there it's going to go down so we just want the heating pad on this back little corner so i am going to cut this one in half and i clearly put a line right here where you are allowed to cut so i'm just using ducting tape to secure the heating pad to the subfloor. It wrinkles really easily so we found it helpful that Tim kind of pulls the end of the tape to create tension and then I just peel the backing a little bit at a time. Get the old sleeve out. Flush that is, that's crazy. <laughs> Did buy this double-sided flooring tape. It's for installing vinyl flooring and it's super thin so it works great we actually put in a couple spots just at the junctions um and because we didn't want any like bubbling when you step on it or when you step on the floor on top so that might work for you the vinyl sheet is on the ground it's just laying on here right now to get rid of some of the wrinkles um we're gonna put double-sided tape over where the heating pads are because we don't want to glue that down but we'll be putting vinyl glue adhesive um on all of the subfloor areas so we'll flip half the mat up, work on this side first, and then do the other half later. Well, we just use this Mappe Eco 350 vinyl floor adhesive, and you do need the specific trowel that goes with it. Very small notch trowel. it down 
around, make sure you have some sort of light source so you can see if there's any bubbles or creases or anything, um, because chances are you'll have to push some of the glue out with a rolling pin just to make sure it flattens up nicely. Now I'm gonna get off of it so I don't put any footprints in it, and it's gotta dry for 24 hours, so we'll just be closing up the van and making sure no nobody steps on it. So the last big step of the floor is making sure that you silicone all of the edges between the van wall and the floor. Um, that's just to prevent any water or spills from actually seeping down into the subfloor. So it's a continuous waterproof layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I just use clear silicone. As I mentioned, we can have two separate systems with the heating pads. The rear two will be on a single thermostat, and then our big long one along the center for our walkway is on a separate thermostat. And I plan to keep that thermostat around like 25 degrees, something basically where it's never going to get tripped. And then I'm wiring it to a switch right beside the bed here so that, let's say, you're having a lazy day in the van or you wake up early in the morning and you want heated floors when you're showering and having breakfast, you can just flip this on. And I wanted to buy the bed with an illuminated switch so that you never forget to leave it on when you're sleeping at night. So we, we thought this was gonna be a better option than having like the actual thermostat sitting out that you're always adjusting. Um, we'll try and keep the thermostat somewhere that's accessible but hidden because I'll admit they're not the nicest looking with the rest of the interior. So we want to keep it just to a switch. And we tried to find a 12 volt timer switch, but had a really hard time. So if you guys know of any, leave them in the comments below. We'd love to check them out. A, a 12 volt timer switch that is aesthetically pleasing. We also wanted to show you how it looked from the sliding door because we were skeptical about how seamless it was going to look with the sheet vinyl on top of it. And we're really happy with how it turned out. We'll admit that you cannot feel or see any grooves or bumps underneath it. Even if you try to find the edge of it, it's quite difficult. So that's a really important point when you're doing the install is make sure you know exactly where you've put it and the dimensions of the pad so that you don't screw through it when you're doing the rest of your build. We'd suggest putting measuring tape down and then taking a couple photos so you always know the frame of reference of where exactly they are. If you router the wires in the same way we did, you won't be able to see them either. So it would be a good idea to put a tape measure down and take a photo of exactly where your wires are running. Because when you're mounting things in the garage, screwing anything down into the floor, you do not want to screw into that wire. Now that the heating pad's installed, I'll just show you how to wire them up. When you order them from MeHeat, you should ask Andreas or make sure you add on these 12 volt thermostats. The wiring pattern is shown on the back, but basically you have your temperature sensor on the first two and then your positive lead from your heating pad goes in terminal six. And then your positive from your battery comes in and goes to both 10 and 12, and I've just spliced it there. And then my negative goes out from 11, goes into, I just use a Wago connector here, and then it goes and goes to my battery negative as well as the negative of the heating pad. So it's a really, I found it quite confusing when I was reading the manual, but hopefully that helps clarify it's really not that difficult. Now that we have power to the thermostat, it is reading 5.4 degrees Celsius. There's no other indicator. There should be a little sun here when the heating pad is giving out power or actually heating. So we need to go into the settings and you do that by holding the set button for two seconds and then adjust the temperature up and down with these to the desired temperature you want for the heating pad to turn on. We hold that right now it's at 2.6 celsius we'll move it up to let's go 10 degrees celsius <clears throat> perfect as soon as i do that the sun comes back on and it's now heating <clears throat> with the way i have it set up right now it'll heat until the temperature sensor reads 10 degrees and then it'll shut off that's probably how we'll have it set up on our main heating pad and even for these battery ones the battery and the water tank will have it set to probably two degrees Celsius, so that any time the temperature drops below two degrees Celsius in this area, this will turn on, heat it back above two degrees, and shut off again. Just so that it never gets below zero and, and uh, inhibits our BMS for charging. We're gonna use the water tank side as a formal test. So checking it with the temperature sensor, it is 6.6 .6 degrees. 
Just for reference today, it's 2 degrees Celsius, which equates to around 35 degrees Fahrenheit for you American folk. So I wired up the water tank side. It's all ready to go. I'm just going to turn on this and it's heating. So I started the timer. As I mentioned, it's going to keep heating up until this temperature sensor reads 10 degrees, which is not going to today. In reality, we're going to have a boxed in area, so I expect that it'll retain heat much better than when it's just exposed to the open air. But for the purpose of this test, it's just to see how much it heats up the floor itself. And this may be more relevant to like your main walkway in the van, something like that. We're at two minutes. We see the pads already warming up. So just let me show you two minutes and it's at 12.8 degrees Celsius. Approaching five minutes and the temperature is 16.7 degrees Celsius. Twenty one point three degrees. Fifteen minutes. And we're at twenty three point six degrees Celsius. Twenty minute test. Twenty four point one degrees Celsius. We are going to call it there folks. I hope you found this little test helpful. All that's left to do now is finish the rest of the van and try this out in the real world. All the products we use, the Mi Heat floor pads, everything is in the description below. Uh, this video isn't sponsored and they're not affiliate links, so we just wanted to share this in case you find it helpful. As always, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you guys next time.